Between aging and busy lifestyles, many women struggle with maintaining their physical and mental wellness. At Aquavita Concierge Healthcare Services for Women, we can help you revitalize your health and reclaim your life. We start from within by balancing your hormones, allowing your body to achieve and maintain desired weight goals. We also specialize in peptide therapies, regenerative medicine, sexual health, and aesthetics in our state-of-the-art facilities. Feel better, look better, live better. At Aquavita, visit aquavitality.com and begin your journey today. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car, before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. My paranormal peeps, this is Matt with Deep Woods Paranormal. Welcome back to the Deep Woods Paranormal podcast. Uh, I am your host. A um, little bit about our team. If you've not been on uh, our podcast before, I'm sorry, I have to move my mic because I don't think people can hear me. Um, we've been researching the paranormal for almost 30 years, Amanda and I, um, either separately or whatever. Before before we had a team, we've been researching paranormal activity. Um, So that said, um, what we research is we research ghosts, hauntings, uh, excuse me, hauntings, uh, poltergeist activity, demonic activity, um, haunted homes or locations, um, Bigfoot, uh, dog man, lizard man, uh, goat man, uh, UFOs, um, and anything else that's paranormal in nature, uh, be it, uh, you know, just, just has to be not normal and something that we would consider to be paranormal in nature. So, all right. So I'm going to go through, this is going to be like a question and answer type of podcast. Um, we want to thank everyone, number one, for their support and listening to our channel um, and for liking and subscribing on our YouTube channel and on here as well. Um, we really appreciate your support. Um, also, we really appreciate the feedback and the comments and the questions. So I get a lot of questions about Bigfoot. So I'm basically going to go back and, and basically um, answer some questions for you guys. I think there's about 15 questions on here or so, give or take. And that's a little Miss Mary behind, you, behind me if uh, you're watching on the YouTube channel. Okay. So it says, how long have I been Bigfooting? I started my research right after I had that first initial sighting uh, in Black Star Canyon, where we saw that silvery gray Bigfoot that essentially um, was throwing rocks at us. And as we were as we were standing there getting ready to do a ghost tour, believe it or not, um, that changed everything for me. I went from holy, you know, no, they don't exist. They're just some kind of a scary tale. Everybody tells their kids to keep them out of the woods at night or whatever to, oh my gosh, they are real. And I would say you have to have an encounter where you can say that it couldn't be anything else. And I know for a fact that this thing couldn't have been anything else. Um, So getting back to how long have I been doing this? Uh, so essentially I started right after that. I think that was about, God, I've been mid two thousands. So it's been at least eight or nine years that I've been running around researching Bigfoots. I spent a lot of my time up at Black Star Canyon, um, mainly doing ghost hunts at first, but then I started mixing in ghost hunting with Bigfoot research. And so, um, essentially I would go up like, I was up there like four or five times a day, a week. I mean, sometimes two or three times a day. I'd leave and come back or go get some meat, come back, whatever. Um, but most of the time I was up there pretty late. Anywhere, I would start from anywhere from 4 p.m. in the afternoon all the way up till 10 or p.m., 10 p.m. or later. 
and then I'd be out there till you know all hours of the night, two, three, four o'clock in the morning sometimes, and I had a lot of experiences with them. Um, a lot of the times I was just completely by myself. I know there was nobody else around, so maybe that's why they felt compelled to come down and, and communicate with me. But um, you know, we've been researching here in, in uh, Texas now for about three years as well, so. I would say the answer to that question is probably eight plus years, nine years. I don't, I don't remember exactly what the date was when that happened, but uh, it's been almost almost 10 years. So, okay. So what are the best areas to Bigfoot at? I would say what I always do um, when I'm looking for a Bigfoot location, the first thing I do is I go on Google or some other search engine and look up um, – you know, basically Bigfoot sightings in that area, in an area that I want to research, be it, um, you know, the Sam Houston National Forest, be it, um, you know, somewhere else near the Louisiana border, uh, whatever location I'm looking at, I want to do a search. I want to see if I can find other Bigfoot reports. And then essentially what I do from there is I pin them on a map and I will do a video uh, later next week showing um, kind of different places of where I've pinned and why I've pinned. And I'll go back. I want to do a whole thing on Black Star Canyon um, talking about, you know, why it's a good location and where I've had my sightings and stuff like that. So if you're on our YouTube channel, you'll be able to see that. Uh, I tried to podcast it earlier, but it's if you're not visually seeing what I'm talking about, you're not going to be able to understand um, what I'm talking about, I'll probably lose you. So I don't want to do that. I'd rather have people go to our Deep Woods Paranormal um, YouTube channel, and you'll be able to see that probably next week. You can kind of see where you know where I pin things and stuff like that. So um, are big bits really in cities? Um, well, I wouldn't say they're you know like if let's just take Houston for example. I don't think they're in the suburbs of Houston. I don't think they're down like walking the streets or anything, but on the outskirts of Houston, well, most people don't know. Houston is a very forested area. That whole area um, has a lot of Bigfoot sightings, even in residential areas. And the reason for that, they're building like crazy out here. They're going into an area where there's a bunch of woods and carving out these new residential areas or apartments or uh, businesses or whatever. They're just carving into these big chunks of forested area and putting a road into it and then kind of slowly but surely building around that homes and whatever else. Um, Bigfoots are kind of fleeing that area or maybe they're, you know, that's their territory. So essentially they're coming into those areas to hunt deer or, you know, fish or, or whatever they're used to doing. And um, because man is there now, I'm sure they're being more careful, but I do think that they do come into those areas. I think they're, they come into those areas later at night, maybe uh, early in the morning. Sometimes um, I would, I would probably recommend that if you live in those areas, you keep your eyes open, keep a video camera, um, you know, with you if you're in a forested area, because you could possibly have a sighting or hear something. Um, from people I've talked to, we have a couple clients down in the Houston Houston area that live on, like I said, the outskirts of Houston. They live in forested areas. Um, a lot of them have had those properties for a long period of time. They have land. They have acreage. They don't just have like a like a single family home or something like that. They've got acreage. They've got at least two or three or four acres or more. And the homes are very spread out and they're forced in between the homes. Um, so I think what happens, especially in the city areas, is but I, I, my belief, and, and all of this is based off of my experiences and my conclusions. And they're always kind of changing. The more I do this, the more I would say the more I learn, but also the more questions I have, the more I, I'm trying to figure out, okay, wait. I was told this is what is happening, but that's not real, or this isn't really happening. This is happening a different way or whatever, whatever you want to say. I just, I have more questions than I have answers with these things. Um, 
the more I research them, the more interactions I have, the more I'm scratching my head going, wait, why did that just happen? So, um, yes, I do believe they have migrational routes that come through those areas. And when they, when it's disrupted by man, I think they still kind of come through those areas, but they skirt the forest a little bit more or they come, they, you know, they're curious. They maybe peek their heads out of the forest to look and see and somebody sees them or they run across a road that wasn't there before uh, because they have to get to the other side for whatever reason. Um, maybe they're going to mate. Maybe they're going to hunt or maybe they, you know, that's their territory. Maybe that's just the area they roam. So, yes, I do believe they go into cities. I do believe that, you know, not like downtown Houston or anything, but I do think they're on the outskirts. I think some of them, because they built homes around these forested areas, these big chunks of forested areas, um, and there's still these big forested areas that they haven't developed yet, and hopefully they won't, those Bigfoots have just stayed in that area. Their territory is a lot smaller, but they do stay in the area. And then I think people see them more because, number one, they're in the area where Bigfoots are. But number two, you know, they've been there for a long time and they don't really want to give up, you know, their land, I would imagine. Um, so somebody asked me how many Bigfoot encounters I've had. Honestly, I've lost count. Um, I, I would say I'm getting close to 50, maybe. Or I can say I that was nothing else. That couldn't be anything else but a Bigfoot. And that's what I always tell people when you're um, with me, if you're coming out and, and trying to have an experience, um, you know, I don't want you to just hear a tree knock and go, okay, well, Bigfoot's are real, or you maybe see some eyes shine or um, something else happens. We found some prints. I want you to have an experience where you can say, okay, Matt, I know for sure that that was not a Bigfoot. I mean, it was a Bigfoot and it couldn't have been everything else. Um, so like I said, I had my first sighting way back when, at least almost, probably almost 10 years ago now. Um, and then after that, and I'll talk about this during the Black Star Canyon video I'm going to do here. Um, I think I started figuring out, I, I did a lot of research. Um, I did a lot of research about the history of Black Star and the area. And I found all these old reports and it kind of circled an area and I'll go over that. Um, when I do the, the Black Star Canyon video here, um, that will not be a podcast. You'll have to go to our YouTube channel, deepwoodsparanormal.com. I'm sorry, deepwoodsparanormal at our YouTube channel um, to find that. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've just, I mean, in California alone, I had probably at least 20 different encounters. Um, and I'll talk about a lot of those when I go over um, the map. For Black Star Canyon. When we moved out here, I had, God, we we had a couple encounters in the Sam Houston National Forest. Uh, I think Amanda saw her very first Bigfoot at that point in time. That we were driving by and it was moving, so she wasn't exactly sure what that was. Uh, about two seconds later, I think I saw another one um, as we kind of drove by about 25 miles an hour. And uh, so neither one of us could verify it, but we've had other different things happen there in the Sam Houston National Forest. And then there's Joe's camp. Um, we spent almost almost two years now. It's been about two years now um, going to Joe's camp like once a month, going up there, researching, documenting our experiences. And that's if you go to Joe's camp on our YouTube channel, you'll find that. Um that was all of our experiences. We experienced tree knocks and eye shine, um, you know, and then we found dead deer and then we found tree structures and trees bent over and all this other stuff. We found so many things, um, footprints, multiple footprints, and then uh, just, just strange stuff. I mean, stuff I can't explain. Um, so, and then we had a couple of sightings too. I actually had a daylight sighting. Um, that was one of my coolest experiences where I had the, the binoculars. If you watch our little gear video, um, gear review of Bigfoot, um, not gear, but my, ba my bag um, that I carry, I have this little, that little binocular. Um, Joe and I were sitting at a table 
on looking up into the forest and I thought I saw it. I'm like, wait, where did that old burnt out tree come from? And this one was black. And so it was big too. Big, big guy. Um, so I started, I took out those little binoculars, uh, monocular, not binoculars, binocular. I put it up to my eye and I started zooming. I'm like, oh my God, it's a Bigfoot. And I could zoom in. I could see the face. I could see the eye. The eye was just solid black with a white speck in the middle. I mean, if you're watching this, it was about the size of a quarter. The, the white part of the eye was about the size of a quarter. And uh, Joe had always told me, it looks like they're wearing sunglasses, some of them. And it did. It looked like it was wearing sunglasses. If I could, If I didn't have the binocular in my hand, I would have thought that was a solid black eye. And it looks, you know, they're huge. Whoa, man. Sorry, my cat just scared the crap out of me. But the eyes were, you know, baseball size, if not a little bit bigger. And uh, essentially, you know, the little white spot was right in the middle, about the size of a quarter. Anyways, um, that was a really cool experience, especially to see it at, during the day, standing right in the middle of the road. And uh, that one probably was pushing at least 12 feet or more. Okay. So, uh, what is your scariest Bigfoot encounter? Well, again, I'll cover this when I do the Black Star video. Um, essentially, it happened when I had that encounter um, where the trees grew over up at Black Star Canyon, um, up by the mine. I was standing there, heard growling behind me. Uh, I thought it was a mountain lion. And then essentially um, that stopped. And then the tree to the other side of the road uh, down by the creek started shaking back and forth. And I recorded it with video. And unfortunately, I didn't have enough IR light to get it on, on camera. So essentially, um, this thing basically sat there for about 30 seconds just shaking this bush and then took off running to the left. just took off to the left and took off running. And I, I mean, I could see it. But I'm not, the camera, unfortunately, didn't have enough IR light. It was just so dark that night um, that it just couldn't see it and didn't get caught on camera. Um, just, you know, 20-year-old camera. Well, back then, it was only about five or six years old. So, anyways. Um, and then, basically, after that encounter, I had my eye. I was actually doing an EVP session trying to communicate with ghosts. I had a K2 out and stuff and was just documenting myself doing an EVP session. Because there was an area where one of those trees up where the trees grow over, I believe that somebody was hung. And uh, people have seen somebody walking by and just disappearing. I've heard from multiple people about that. So after that, I walked back down. Uh, I got about 100 feet from where I was. And there's an embankment that comes down. And I've talked about this before. And I kind of glanced to my left. And right about, and you can't see Mary, but she's kind of on the desk next to me. And there's these huge red eyes and this thing's just solid black, crouched down. It's about six feet tall, sitting on the embankment, about two feet up. And it just scared the living bejesus out of me. I went, okay, this is the one I call the bouncer. He's, I think there's, actually, I think there's twins. He's about six feet wide. He's not very tall. He's only like seven or eight feet tall. And he's just a big barrel chested Bigfoot. I mean, the arms on that thing are at least two or three feet wide. I mean, it's just, he's just a big, bulky, heavy, muscular guy. I'm pretty sure it's a male. Um, and there's two of them. I actually got one of them or maybe even both of them on a trap cam uh, right before this happened. And uh, so essentially... That scared the bejesus out of me. Um, I got about six or seven steps back, and finally, I was like, I got to turn around and look and see if it's there. And if it is, I got to turn the camera back on and get it on camera. And uh, nope, it was gone. No noise, just gone. And so as I walked out, it made sure I knew that it was still there um, the whole way out. I could hear like the trees rustling next to me. It sounded like somebody was walking in the brush next to me. And so I walked pretty quick out of Blackstar Canyon that night. And it honestly took me about three or four months to even work up the courage to go back out there. 
Um, I wasn't doing tours anymore, ghost hunting tours anymore. And, uh, yeah, I was, my heart always beat a little bit faster, especially when I was next to the bushes. I could feel them next to me. I mean, they were behind these really tall bushes that were maybe seven or eight feet tall, maybe a little bit taller than that. But I knew they were there. They knew I was there. And they knew that I was scared of them after that. So I was very careful. Um, and after that account, basically, I, I didn't really see how many more sightings of them. Uh, I kind of broke their trust. And I'll, I'll go into that later. Anyways, um, what is the biggest print you've ever found? We found a 22-inch footprint at Joe's camp. Um we documented it on video. Unfortunately, I didn't have the plaster casting with me. Somehow it got left behind, and so we weren't able to cast it. But, yeah, that's the biggest print I ever found. It was massive. I mean, I have a size 13 wide, and my shoe looked like, you know, like a little kid's shoe, kid's foot next to this thing, um, both in length and width. Uh, let's see. What else did uh, – have you ever seen Bigfoots in groups? I've seen them just a couple of times that way. And I'll go more into this um, with the Black Star Canyon um, video, but I'll go ahead and answer that. I was up by the mine, and if you watch the video, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Looking down, I saw movement, and I walked over, and I actually had a night vision binocular with me. And unfortunately, this one did not record. I've since completely, we've completely upgraded uh, our night vision monoculars and, and binoculars and stuff we have what we can very high high quality ones now but this is when i was first starting out and i couldn't afford it so i was looking down and actually i saw i think about eight of them sitting in a circle down by the creek or the creek wasn't really running at that point they were just sitting on rocks and um so yeah i just sat there and watched them and uh then i saw two of them get up and walk away i don't think they knew i knew they were there. I don't think they even saw me. But anyways, that was a cool experience. Um, let's see. What's the next question? Bear with me. I'm sorry. I forgot to close the door. The wander's going. Uh, okay. That uh, that was, I think that's the only time I've ever actually seen them in groups, um, to be honest with you. What is the biggest Bigfoot I've ever seen? Um I've had two encounters, one at Black Star Canyon, one at Joe's Camp, where I saw something. The, the one I saw in Black Star Canyon was just massive. I mean, that thing was huge. I mean, they say they stop at 12 or 14 feet or whatever. I don't think so. Um, this one had to be pushing 18, 20 feet tall, and it was just massive. I mean, just a huge creature. And it was there was a tree there. And it literally was looking over the top of the tree down at us. Um, couldn't see any facial features. All we could see was a silhouette. Scared the living crap out of me. That's, you know, I, I wouldn't say that's my scariest Bigfoot encounter, but that's, it was unnerving. Let's just put it that way. I didn't feel threatened or in danger, but I definitely felt like something, you know, I'm like, okay, you know, you either need to move on or get out of here or something. Um, I mean, I think that it probably just that would look like King Kong. They probably could have just picked me up and snapped me into two pieces. Okay. Have I ever seen a baby Bigfoot? Um, I have not. Uh, a lot of our clients uh, out here in Texas have reported seeing them, but I've never seen them. Um, are Bigfoots and Dogman the same thing? To be honest with you, I don't know. Um, at this point in time, you know, I'd imagine they're probably different things. I know I've met a lot of people uh, who've had sightings of both, and they say they look more like a dog, like a giant werewolf, um, and they get as big or bigger than than uh, Bigfoots. I've also heard reports that they fight each other, but uh, you know, I don't know. To be honest with you, um, I'm hoping to have an encounter with one, a positive encounter with one, sometime in the future. But you never know. Um, how many species of Bigfoot are there? Uh, from what I've kind of done my own research on and listened to people talk about and do comparisons, if you look, you know, not just in Texas or California or the United States alone, and you compare it um, 
to the whole world. There's, you know, there's just so many different types of Bigfoot creatures out there. Even in the United States, we have, uh, you know, the wood booger and the swamp creature and all these other different names for this, pretty much the same thing. And they have a uh, skunk ape. Are they all, you know, one species? I don't know. I, I would imagine they probably come from the same tree. Um, one thing that I've learned is that Bigfoots are kind of like people. Uh, they're all different shapes and sizes, colors, skin colors, a little bit different. A lot of the fur is a little bit different. Um, so I'd imagine they come in all different shapes and sizes. And so I believe they're just maybe one species. But if you took the same species and dropped it in a different location, let's say you put, took the American Bigfoot and dropped it in Asia, um, you know, a male and a female, their offspring will probably look different than them. They may, may not be as big. It just depends on you know, the environment they're in and the food sources and all that stuff. Um, so I imagine, you know, the, the better food sources they have and the more terrain they have uh, and the more area they have, uh, they could grow, grow bigger if they're not disturbed and stuff like that. Uh, Oregon and Washington are a really good example of that because there are, you know, reports of 14 foot Bigfoots out there a lot. They're big. Um, California and Northern California, they're supposed to be really big. Um, the ones I've seen in California myself down in Orange County, they, you know, some of them are big, but most of them are shorter and stockier. Like I said, the, the, you know, they call that one the bouncer. Um, so, yeah, that's, I mean, that's open for debate. I mean, I'm sure you can leave a comment down below if you want. Um, on our YouTube channel, but there's just a lot of different um, theories and stuff at this point as to, you know, number one, what they are, and number two, you know, are they a species of man or are they something else? Is there also a species of man that's not been known uh, to Neanderthals or whatever um, survive and they just took to the forest? Who knows? I mean, there's so much research that needs to be done. It's not even funny. Okay. Um, how many colors of fur have you seen? I have personally seen, let's see, I've seen a blonde one. I've seen a dark brown one. I've seen a black one. And I've seen a silver gray one. Um, but I think that as they get older, maybe they lose their pigment. Um, and then also... Some of the Bigfoots have like mold or um, mildew or stuff that grows on their fur, especially the tan ones, which gives them a green tint, which makes them, you know, have an easier time blending in with their environments. Um, you know, that's why they kind of look like trees sometimes when you see if you can figure out it's a Bigfoot. So, um, I, you know, myself, I've only seen four. Um, not to say that there's not like, a, you know, different shades of these creatures, but I've seen black, brown, tan, and uh, kind of a reddish one too. So, it, you know, there could be more. Like I said, you know, these colors could vary. Offspring could be a little lighter, a little darker. Who knows? But anyways, um, okay. Our Bigfoot Gigantopithecus. Part of me thinks yes, part of me thinks no. Um, they could be an offshoot from them. Um, what's interesting about Joe's camp is he has a lot of cane fields in his on his property. And one of the things that I did some research on, Gigantopithecus, they didn't eat meat that we know of. They ate sugarcane. And so... My thinking is, okay, well, if they're eating sugarcane, are they eating the sugarcane off of Joe's property? Is that one of their staples? Is that something they eat? Because um, basically they say if, if you look up Gigantopithecus, um, they would have competed with a giant panda th in this day and age for food because they would basically eat through you know all this um, sugarcane. You know, they could eat fields in, in a matter of days probably or less. Uh, they would have probably given the uh, giant panda a run for their money. 
So yeah, I you know that I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Are they gigantic? You know, like I said, further research needs to be done. We need to get the scientific community in here once we get to the point where we can tranquilize one or unfortunately maybe kill one and then you know have them study the the stomach contents if they have stomach well I'm pretty sure they have some kind of stomach but there needs to be more research um, probably with scientists involved and stuff like that so um, how many states have I done research in uh, besides Texas and, and California I've done research in Arizona what else was I I want to say I was in in Utah. We did some research out there too, but uh, I actually kind of poke around. I have a friend in Idaho um, that's kind of getting into Bigfoot research, and I've been poking around there. Uh, I have not physically. Well, we've been to Idaho, Amanda and I have, but uh, I have not physically done any Bigfoot research up there. And then I also follow all the reports that come in from the BFRO and other um, Bigfoot researchers. Uh, I follow them on Facebook and whatever else to see what their encounters are, mainly because I want to see if they match mine. Okay, um, let's see. Last one. How many expeditions have you been on? Well, depends on your definition of expedition. Um, I've been on several Bigfoot research hunts. Um, or if you're calling it an expedition, you're probably meaning you pick up your tent and you go stake it out somewhere in the woods and do your research out there. Um, Mary, sorry, my kitty's trying to look through the window here, messing with the blinds. So, um, let's see. I've been on a BFRO expedition up in, in uh, California. Um, I've done my own expeditions in Big Bear, um, in Arizona, I camped in the car for one night, which was not very much fun. Um, and then let's see, Texas, we've been multiple places out here camping in the woods. So, uh, I would say I probably, you know, if, depending on how you take the word expedition, I've been on hundreds, you know, I've been on hundreds of Bigfoot hunts, if you will, um, where I've gone and camped and stayed places on probably around nine or 10 full times. So. Anyways, guys, I hope that answers your questions. Uh, thank you for submitting them. Um, if you want to submit questions, you can go on our Facebook page, our Twitter page. Um, you can contact us through the comments on here on YouTube, or you can contact us through our website. Uh, our email and phone number are there, deepwoodsparanormal.com. Um, so if you just look up Deep Woods Paranormal, a lot of stuff will probably come up for us. So you can choose which... Uh, platform you want to contact us through. Anyways, guys, uh, this video is getting a little long, and uh, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Uh, please like and subscribe if you're on our YouTube channel. Um, we're trying to grow this channel as much as possible. So, again, um, lots of different content on this channel, and uh, so something for everybody who who likes the paranormal. All right, guys, thank you again. You guys have a great night. Between aging and busy lifestyles, many women struggle with maintaining their physical and mental wellness. At Aquavita Concierge Healthcare Services for Women, we can help you revitalize your health and reclaim your life. We start from within by balancing your hormones, allowing your body to achieve and maintain desired weight goals. We also specialize in peptide therapies, regenerative medicine, sexual health, and aesthetics in our state-of-the-art facilities. Feel better, look better, live better. At Aquavita, visit aquavitality.com and begin your journey today. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to Chumbacasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.